Hello friends, let's understand our next chapter. You know, in my previous class, I told you that I will let you know what are these directories, these 20 directories that are inside root. These are like bin, dev, home, so bin directories to control all the commands. If you go to bin, you can always check by going inside bin. If you see, it is holding all the command related packages. So what is packages? In Windows, there are software, same that are in XC format. Same in Linux, there are RPMs. This RPM is packages extension. Okay, now let's understand our next directory. We will come back to root again and see. Let me first delete this extra files. Now you will not be confused. So we, we can delete multiple files as with one command. So now we have all the directories that are inside root and root manage all these directories. Okay, let's start with bin again. It is holding important binary files. And next is boot. What is boot holding? You as you already understand by the name. It is holding the boot loader, which load the whole operating system after reading the configuration files. Next directory is dev means, which keeps device files. It means all kind of hardware, software devices. It is keeping those devices. Next is etc. etc is keeping configuration files of the system where you can configure any of the file. So these are different configuration files of the system. These are usually read by the operating system at the time of reboot and at the time of when server is online as next is home. So home directory is keeping user information. Like we have two users inside home. Student and John. These are the users. So home directory is for users. Next is library file. Which keeps essential libraries slash lib. So there are two files lib and lib64. Same like we have in C drive in windows. That is program file and program 86 files. Same way here library and lib64 files. Next is media. So, uh, as you understand by the name media, it keeps the CD, DVD information or, you know, removable media information. So, currently it's showing nothing because we have not mounted anything. Mounted means we have not connected anything with this server until now. Next is OPT. OPE is for keeping optional softwares. It keeps optional software. Means you can keep there your optional softwares, which are extras. If you see here, Croc keeps virtual system for kernel and processes information. It gives mainly processing information like your cat proc CPU info. If you do cat proc CPU info, it is telling you how many CPUs are there and it is giving all the information about the CPU. Root is home directory for root. Next is run. Run is for runtime variable data. Means if some process is running right now, it comes under this run directory. Has been. Now next is sbin bin means these are system binaries files controlled by root then we have temp directory it keeps the temporary information means you can delete this these information nothing is like going to impact here but in production environment you cannot delete the data from temp without asking the application teams who are the owner of the server because if you delete there will be like data loss usually it is not recommended to keep application related data in temp but in banking projects they always keep data in temp because some files move from one place to another place over ftp or mainframe from there next is usr if you see usr it keeps the information of read only data means there are softwares that are read only and last is var is to keep log related data System logs usually generated inside where and packages information also present inside where. So logs, cache, all these can be find out inside where. As larty, sys, it keeps the system files. So these were the directory structure of the root file system. Now if you want to check by uh, tree command tree slash because we want to check the hierarchy of parent directory root, then we have to do this because output would be too long. To make the output short, we can always run tree slash then pipe, then more. If you see now, it is giving you the information that inside boot, there are these many files. If you press, keep pressing enter, inside dev, it is telling these are the devices. These are device names. Same way if you keep pressing it. And inside device, there is CD room as. Now, if you keep pressing, or you can press space bar key to go quickly at the bottom. See, I'm pressing space bar key. Now, it is saying inside, etc. These are the configuration files dot conf. So this way you can check the information of any directory. Thank you. Today, we are going to learn basics about VI Editor. 6. Editor is used to edit the files. And every Linux administrator will encounter this in his daily life. And this is one of the important topics. 
What is VI Editor? It is visual interface to edit the files. And uh, there is advanced version also, which is called Vim. I will tell you the difference between VI and Vim. And there is one more editor which is G-Edit that works in graphical mode. But as a Linux admin, you will never get graphical mode. You don't need to use G-Edit. We will use only VI and Vim. Before knowing, we need to know like whether VI are in present in Linux system or not. We can do which VI, which command is to check whether this command is present or not inside the Linux system. Like we can do which LS which we learn. We can do with CD which PWD. This way we can check if command is present or not. For Y let's check. It is saying command is present for Y. Now check for Vim. It is saying command is present present for Vim. Let's check if it is present for Gedit. It's saying it is present for Gedit. Let's check there now. If they are exist in the Linux system then you can type RPM hyphen QF means find. Q means query. Then we will type USR bin Y. It is saying that package is present. Same we will find out for VM. It is saying we are present. Now let's check for gedit. Yes, it is present for gedit as, but when I will run gedit here, it is giving warning. You cannot display because you are in command line mode. It will work only in graphical user mode. Let's check if we are, we are using the V or just giving the file name. You can give any file name here. Now if you see the blank window came in cron of us. What you need to do to type inside it, to type inside it, you have to press the option I button. Once you press the I button, it changed to insert mode. And if you press the escape button, it again come to ready mode. Means it is ready to type. But you have to press I before inserting. Otherwise, it won't let you type. Because I press I, it is now letting me to type. Now let's do editing inside it. We are giving commands to it. We give uptime, we give date, we give call, we give cat, etc. Crontab. By the way, Crontab is the configuration file. It's to automate the task. Like the task which we need daily in our life, this Crontab is used. We want to run these five types of command. And now I press I because I am in insert mode now. Now, I want to save and exit out of it. Then for this, first of all, we have to press escape. Then we have to press colon, then W. What it will do means it will save the file. Okay, file is saved, but now... It is not letting us to come out. It has saved the file, but it is not allowing us to come out of the file. How we can come out of the file? For that, we can do colon or we can do Q and enter. Now we come out of the file. Now we can check if data is there or not inside. Data is there. Suppose now we want to run all the commands in a single line. How we can run it? To run the command in single line, we will give it sh all. Sh means shell and all means the command we have given inside the all file. It will going to execute them one by one all at once. But it will be happening like very fast. You will not be able to notice. Let's press enter. See, now it has given the output of each and every command. It pasted hello world. It pasted the uptime. It pasted pasted the date. And it pasted the calendar. And it pasted to the cron tab output as suppose now we are going to edit it again via vi and we don't want to run this command. Cat etc cron tab. Then what we need to do we have to press I to go to insert mode. Now I am inside insert mode. You can see I press I. Now what you need to do? You have to put hash. Hash is simply commenting this file. And VI editor will understand that system administrator don't want to run this command. That's why he is putting hash. Now we will press escape. This time, what we will do? We will do shift ZZ. We have to press ZZ two times keeping the shift press. Now we came out. Let's check again. Look at all. Now you can see hash is there. Shift Z also save the file. Now let's execute it again. Edit all. Let's see this time it give this 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 output or not this highlighted output. Let's see. Now you can see it has not given that output except it has pasted all other outputs. Now let's again check. Suppose we done mistake. How to delete? Now this hash sign simple. You have to press I. But I don't want to press I. This time. I want to delete this hash sign. Without pressing I button, we can always click on X button. Once we click on X, you can see cursor is right currently right there on green screen. We, when we press X, it will remove this hash sign. But what if it was a mistake from our side? We, my mistake, press X. Now we want to come out of the file without changing anything. Then what we need to do? For that, what we need to do? We have to press colon Q. Q is to exit without saving. Now it is saying that you have changed. To override this, you have to put exclamatory sign. Only then you, you can come out of it. Okay. We will do the same do Q and we will put exclamatory sign. See here I have removed the sign but because I did mistake I, I don't want it to save and I am quitting. 
without saving. Let's see if change was performed or not. I used colon Q and exclamatory sign. Now it came out. Earlier, it was not allowing us to come out of the file. Now check. If you can see here, hash is there. We did not change anything and we came out of the file successfully. This will be a lifesaver for you in case when you will try to change the configuration files. Whenever you will see configuration changes or requests are coming in your shifts or in your Linux environment, you have to face this VI editor and VM editor in your daily life. Now let's do the same thing with Vim. What is the difference between Vim and VI? We will get to know now. You can see here, first of all, it is showing colorful. You've seen, but why was not colorful? Now, if I press X button, it removed the S sign. And now we want to save it. But now this time we want to do it with colon X. Let's see what it do. It came out. Now we have saved the file. Now I will let you know what are the commands we have used. This was simple like basic. We have, we will learn advanced via editor as how to work in advance. Like how to delete the character, how to go to next line. These are the things we will learn in our future classes. Suppose now I want to delete. See, I am deleting them just with a, with a single command. But we will learn this in our upcoming classes. Now, until now, what we have learned? We have learned that escape is used to exit in that mode. Colon is used to enter command mode. And W is used to save the file. Q is to quit. And exclamatory sign is to forcefully override prompts that we just showed here. And what are the other commands we used? We use these commands. We use for for save, Q for quit without saving. We use colon X as and we use column Q as when like we mistakenly did it, then we came out without saving. It is to save forcefully and come out of the file. Same we did with shift to Z there. This was the basic of V editing. Thank you for today.